Okay, so I'm right. so I'm sort of happy to, to welcome Ivan from MPI Guys in Dresden, uh, who is going to give the first talk of our seminar series this year. Um, so I asked Ivan, and he said that you know he's very happy for people to ask questions, interrupt him and ask questions while he is talking, or if you prefer, you can wait until the end. Uh, you know, generally, I sort of encourage people to leave their cameras on if, if they don't mind. That sort of gives the speaker, uh, you know, less of a blank screen to look at. So, you know, feel free to do to do that if, if you want or not. Um, so with that, let me uh, allow Ivan to tell us about uh, his randomatic approach to slow dynamics. So, Ivan. Thank you very much, Achilles, for inviting me and for this kind of introduction. Uh, so, first of all, yes, uh, please free to ask me questions uh, from the very beginning. Uh, I will try to give you a brief introduction to the topic, but it's like, for most of you, it will be boring because you know it much better than me. But my topic uh, of the talk uh, is related to these three papers done in collaboration with these three gentlemen uh, from the US and Italy. And it's related to some kind of the random matrix approach to uh, quantum systems. Uh, not only many body, but also hierarchical graphs on single particle level. And this is the kind of the complicated phase diagram which I will discuss today in terms of the disorder, some kind of the parameterized disorder and uh, fat tail distribution of off diagonal matrix elements, the certain matrix ensemble which is related uh, or mapped somehow to this kind of the quantum systems, some of them and the, both the dynamical and static problems and uh, properties of the system will be considered. Localization, multifractality, you see here also ergodicity or weak ergodicity, and diffusion, subdiffusion uh, in some various combinations. So uh, in order to, okay, yes. In order to go further, let's consider just the outline of my talk. It contains introduction to the main part. In the introduction, as I told you, I will give you just a brief introduction to thermalization and its breaking down uh, in systems. Uh, and then try to motivate you why, uh, as Achilles mentioned, uh, NBL exists or not exists, why we should consider some kind of the other ways to describe it uh, in the thermodynamic limit. And uh, in this case, uh, random matrix approach is wanted there. Uh, then uh, I will motivate uh, some kind of the properties of the many body localized phase in terms of this wave, fi wave function structure in the Hilbert space and the corresponding multifractality of it in the random matrix description and go to the uh, main part of the talk, uh, giving the mapping of random matrix ensemble or short range systems to the random matrix ensemble as an idea more concretely on the hierarchical graph structure, and then focus on static first and then dynamical properties of this uh, random matrix ensemble and compare it with their corresponding short range model. Let me start from the very beginning from the brief introduction. And there, just starting from the classical thermalization picture, when we consider just classical uh, glass of hot water put their ice isolated weight, what we will see, we will see that we'll, this system will come to thermalization or equilibrium of cool water, this ice will melt in the hot water and everything is okay. So we understand this thermalization in classical systems, chaotic systems, in the following way of equipartition over degrees of freedom. Which means that if we consider and follow one particle, its trajectory will span over the entire Hilbert space available for the system. And therefore the averaging over time of this trajectory evolving is equivalent to the and it means that with increasing time uh, monitoring of this certain observable, this observable will terminalize to its equilibrium value. Classically, it's like ergodicity hypothesis, everything is clear. Quantum mechanically, we have an issue here because like uh, uh, Schrodinger equation is, uh, shows the unitary dynamics keeping pure states to the pure, and therefore it's not only related to like, we don't have chaos, like classical chaos in these linear equations, we should consider some kind of the quantum chaos, uh, and it should depend not only on the properties of the system, but also on the observable itself. So if we consider the observable, which is kind of the local, so acting only part of, on the part of the system, then the rest part of the, the system can work as the buff for the subsystem, and uh, it, then it will uh, have uh, the same kind of the, the same kind of thermalization of the observable itself. 
So if uh, we consider a generic system, then of course we have this usual question of thermalization, whether a generic quantum system thermalizes under a unitary evolution in this kind of statement. And we have two answers. If yes, then of course we have all this thermalization in terms of a partition of a degree of freedom, which can be characterized in terms of the wave functions, which is important for me, as the ergodicity of the wave functions which spread over the entire Hilbert space available for the system. So this is the wave function plotted like 2D but really highly dimensional Hilbert space as it were one. And then in this situation, as soon as we prepare any wave packet, uh, the evolution of it will, will be diffusive and will spread information over the entire space, coordinate space of the system. So we have this scrambling, we have this everything like related to uh, propagation of uh, local degrees of freedom, initially local degrees of, uh, of freedom to non-local ones, uh, as time evolves and like everything with thermalization. However, if the answer is no, what do we expect to see? We expect to see no scrambling. We should really uh, keep the information local and therefore all these wave packet spreading should be avoided. And this kind of situation is related to uh, applications, of course, immediately. Because all these memory applications, quantum memory applications and so network dynamics should be related to this because any computation is related to non-equilibrium or non-ergodicity, uh, non-ergodic uh, behavior of the system. And here, um, okay, at least as it's uh, most of the community agrees on, in generic many-body system, if we consider it with respect to on-site disorder of a certain amplitude W, some short-range hopping in dimensionality, for example, one, and interacting with each other, when people consider that both this scenario of ergodicity and uh, localization appear as soon as you change the amplitude of the disorder. So it means that if we increase the disorder, we can undergo the transition from ergodicity to localization. However, we should take in mind that we have not only one space in this many body system, but also not only coordinate space, but also the here space with the space of configurations. For example, here is like the space uh, where each node here concrete configuration of these particles living on the sides. And uh, localization in the coordinate space doesn't mean the localization in the Hilbert space, but it means just the breaking of ergodicity. So it means that if I consider and plot wave function intensity in terms of uh, just uh, configurations, because it's many body wave function, then many body localization transition should correspond to ergodicity breaking. Well, the Anderson localization in the Hilbert space forms yet another transition. So it means that this phase diagram shown, okay, it's finite system for a moment, uh, shows three phases, not two, and two uh, phase transitions. And then the questions which are appear here in this community, of course, it's not only the position, concrete position of this uh, MBL transition, but also its type. And uh, some papers also mentioned by Achilles before I started my talk on uh, whether these amplitude of the disorder goes to infinity in determined and cling to that. Usually this one goes. But in general, what we have, we have a general phase diagram in terms of wave function in the Hilbert space, and we will focus on this kind of phase diagram. In order to go further, let me motivate this phase diagram in terms of the universal description in random matrix sets. What we know so far. So we know this left-hand side, ergodic part, uh, since 80s of BGS uh, conjecture, showing that, uh, that any quantized generic chaotic uh, system uh, can be described by the Gaussian random matrix uh, ensembles in terms, both in terms of statistical description of eigen, uh, also eigen vectors, and also it works up to a certain energy scale of the Taoist energy in terms of correlators. On the other side of this transition, of this phase diagram, of course, this localized, Anderson localized in the Hilbert space uh, structure is also quite known in terms of random matrices because like these critical matrices announce its six thesis or in a long range sense, they announce its uh, end of eighties or nineties. It's also understood quite well in terms of uh, perturbation of the Lakater expansion, uh, the convergence of the Lakater expansion, this perturbation theory of localization. What we would like to focus on, we would like to focus on this part, which is really non-ergodic, but extended phase of matter. Uh, extended in terms of the Hilbert space dimension, not in terms of the coordinate basis. 
And moreover, we will focus also on the some kind of their numerical evidences showing that even before many body localization transition, it is seen that the behavior probably is not diffusive, I mean dynamical behavior, but also it can be subdiffusive. This will be the focus of our consideration, but on the random matrix uh, level. So this is the motivation, but in order to go further, let me consider just the usual phase diagram of random matrix ensembles describing Anderson localization. I mean, one of these guys. And among one of these guys, what we usually see, not really the same situation. We see ergodic phase where wave functions are just spread over entire uh, Hilbert space or here the same as space of the matrix and the localized ones. While this non-ergodic, neither ergodic, no localized states, they appear to be only the critical point at their Anderson transition. And uh, they are called critical multifractal states. Why they are critical? Because they are living at their uh, critical point. While they are multifractal, I will explain you now. So they are called fractal in a certain sense. If I consider the cut, I hope uh, you see uh, my screen as well. Uh, not only my, my screen, but also me. If you cut this wave function intensity at a certain level, then there are not where the wave function intensities of this level of this cut will scale with the Hilbert space dimension n uh, as a certain fractional power. So maybe they will not form this uh, fractal geometrically, but still the Hausdorff dimension will be given by some of, uh, number between zero and one. And therefore, they are fractal. But now, if I change this level, the wave function intensity may be characterized not by one number of this, several numbers, which are different house of dimensions. So as soon as I have multiple house of dimensions, I should call this wave function not fractal, but multifractal. This is more or less the issue with the, the entire uh, Hilbert space structure of the many body localized. And then the localized states characterized by these fractal dimensions are given just zero fractal dimension. Ergodic phase gives just fractal dimension one and fractal, really fractal dimension is fractional for this multifractal state. What is the motivation beyond MBL for this uh, multifractality? And because I'm working on this random matrix robust multifractality for some years, uh, it's not only MBL. So for MBL, it's more or less trivial and uh, clear uh, already, like uh, many papers are on this, like as soon as we have localization in the coordinate space, it does mean that we have localization in the hero space, but we have ergodicity breaking with some fractal dimension smaller than one in the entire MBL phase. But even on top of that, the applications of this robust multifractality, they can be found in uh, some applied fields like superconductivity enhancement. If you undergo the transition, localization transition in superconductor just by adding some impurities. So here's monolayer on niobium selenite and you add some silicon on top. Then you see that uh, this uh, system undergoes the transition from ergodic to localized while the superconducting properties, for example, superconducting gap or superconducting critical temperature shows non-monotonic behavior with the peak around the transition. And it's predicted uh, already 13 or 14 years ago in the paper by Figelman and Kravtsov. And it seems that it was shown experimentally two years ago. So of course, you see, as soon as I can do this, I can increase superconductive critical temperature. Of course, I can use superconductors maybe at a larger temperatures if I tune them somehow. Another uh, motivation is related to quantum annealing and machine learning. And it's uh, related to the fact that as soon as you uh, prepare certain quantum annealing protocol, initial state in the protocol itself, you can uh, really realize exponential speeding up of Grover's algorithm if you make your eventual finish uh, wave function to be uh, multifractal, leaving on the uh, minima with their close energy states. So uh, I'm not speaking about this in detail, it's just uh, some examples of motivation which we have so far. And returning back to our stuff, our main question is, so now in all this random matrix stuff, which, is, which was known until 2015, was exactly this phase diagram, where you can realize this multifractality at a certain point, and therefore you should fine tune your 
äh, wieso das be, is it really possible to realize robust multifractality like in MBL phase, but on simple random matrix description? Is it really possible to realize really multifractal phase separated from Anderson localized and ergodic phases by two transitions? Really phase transitions, not crossovers. And of course, uh, so as I mentioned, it's uh, relevant to many body disorder systems, but also it's relevant to some hierarchical graphs and the long-standing questions about the static phase diagram of so-called random regular graphs, which are the graphs which are very similar to the Kelly tree with a fixed branching number. So here's three, here's was it four, but without leaves, without boundaries. So it's the more or less you can think of this random regular graph as a Cayley tree where each leaf is just covered to each other, uh, linked to each other and formed a bound graph with a regular uh, like branching number. And uh, there is long standing question whether this kind of their face uh, appears here and there, not only in many ways. So therefore, from the point of view on frontal matrices, uh, it was a demanded question, what will be the minimal model for a robust multifractal phase? And I will answer to this question very simply. And another question which was also present there is the dynamics. So even before going to this robust uh, phase, you can focus on the ergodic states, on the ergodic phase, and uh, ask the question whether you will see the diffusion all the time, or sometimes you will see something else. And numerical evidence is regular graphs show that the return probability, you prepare your system on one site or one configuration, let it evolve and measure the wave function amplitude of the certain side of the same site, shows either power decay, or if you consider it longer times and larger uh, system sizes, it's not power law, but stage exponential. But what do we expect for this kind of the hierarchical graphs to have as a return probability for diffusion? If we have hierarchical graph like tree-like structure locally with increasing distance from a certain site where initial point where we prepare the system, the number of sites or configurations available will increase exponentially. So as soon as we see diffusion or it's the same as ballistic for these random regular graphs, we should expect decay of the return probability. As soon as we see something which is slower like stretch exponential power law, we should think about an MLS diffusion or even subdiffusion. These are the questions. Six stuff here, how to describe it on the random matrix description of this slow demand. So with this introduction uh, in mind, let me go to the main part and show you the uh, example of this mapping of short range systems to this random matrix ensemble forming the matrix ensemble, which we will consider later. So what we have so far, let's characterize our systems, either tree or random regular graph or many Hilbert space of their many body system. What we usually have, we have short range systems with some kind of locality, either locality in the Hilbert space or both in the Hilbert space in the coordinate space. If we plot them as a uh, random, uh, as a uh, matrix in Hilbert space, we will see that this matrix will be sparse matrix where all the elements, the ones which are random disorder, uh, of diagonal elements will be correlated and really sparse. We have all this, the hierarchical, I increase the distance, farming distance from a certain configuration. The number of available configurations grows at least exponentially. And therefore, because of this, uh, it grows also exponentially with the system size, because the number of like humming distance is related to the system size and therefore the Hilbert space dimension is also exponentially large for the system size. So this is one of the uh, reasons why these systems are hardly accessible. Yet. On the other side of this mapping, we have really random matrix theory of complete graphs, are dense, with uncorrelated identically distributed random numbers of diagonal elements which can be accessed in the thermodynamic limit analytically. And therefore, if we would like to really map one to the other, we should somehow encode all these graph structure, topology, whatever correlations we have here of this matrix into the distribution of these of the elements. 
and five institutions. description, some universal behavior. So what we will see in the next couple of slides that, of course, we cannot describe everything with this. For example, we will get rid as soon as we have the, the entire graph, complete graph, with identically independently distributed of the ideal matrix elements, we do not have information about the Hamming distance anymore and about the uh, coordinate basis and coordinate distances anymore. But what we have, which information we can have, we have the information about the single configuration or single cycles, like fractal dimension, like return probability, like spectrum structure, which is basis independent. This information we have, and with this, we can characterize something about the system. Let me uh, try to really show you this mapping. So as I mentioned several times, in all such systems, random regular graph, Kelly tree, many body systems. We have the hierarchical structure of the Hilbert space, meaning that the uh, distributions, distribution over the distances, I mean distance, uh, between the sides grows at least exponentially. So of course it will be cut at uh, some large distances, but like for random regular graph it's just exponential, where K is the branching number. Unlike the finite dimensional lattices, where this distribution is like more like Gaussian with a certain mean going to infinity in terms of dynamic limit and with a certain width also increasing. Here, as soon as we have just branching number, which is fixed for, for, a, for all system sizes the same, it's just exponential behavior. So the width of this distribution is always finite. As soon as the width is finite and this is distribution normalized, then it means that we have really, if we focus on the most probable distances, it will uh, show us the finite fraction of all links in this graph. If we plot, just plot only these links, we will see that they will form really the uh, dense matrix, maybe not the complete, not the full matrix because this is the finite fraction, but not 100%, but still it will be dense matrix, one thing. And if I plot, uh, like select, uh, for example, these red dots, which are, at their certain distance from uh, uh, one side where we prepared our system initially, these sites are there. Mm -hmm. um, can, I, can I take the, sorry. Uh, can I take the opportunity to ask the, ask a question since you stopped anyway? Yeah, please. Hi, Ivan, this is Reco the, record, yes, recording yes. has started, by the way. So yeah, uh, that's not right. That's right. Uh, so so uh, can you can you just repeat what you said? So basically, you prepare your initial state in some site, and then you select the sites on the graph which are at the, say, the this, maximal distance. Yes. Um, and so, therefore, they are like with each other. They are at their uh, maximal distance. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would like to calculate this this hopping. Over these large distances. So, so hopping, hopping between the initial, uh, hopping between the site where you prepare the state and, uh, and it's, one it's, of these. Uh, yes, yes. And why does it, it form a dense matrix? It will form a dense matrix, not uh, like uh, if I consider it will form one line of this dense matrix. If I consider just initial site, yes, all the sites at the maximal distance uh, shown by. Uh, uh, green, sorry, uh, they will form the dense line. If I consider another initial point, it will be another set of sites with the same kind of the density of uh, sites at the typical distance, right? Uh, but the initial site is not connected to one of these halo sites um, at first order or- No, 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 it's, 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 it's only at the most typical distance. It's not at first order. So the matrix element is something that you derive and we should probably explain next. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah, okay. Fine. It will be derived, Thanks. but, but okay. the point is that the distribution of these matrix elements will be derived. And for this, I should use the structure of the graph. I should really find the, like, uh, the path from, from the initial side to these red sites mm -hmm. and the distance number of hops will be related to the distance, sure. the most typical distance. And mm -hmm. uh, this distribution should encode all this graph structure which I used. So the graph structure of the rest of the sites basically. Of these green sites, yes. Yeah, okay, yeah, thanks. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah it is. Thank you for clarification. 
Um, yes, and uh, let, let us do it. Let us really do it for this simplest case because it's, it's uh, for random regular graph, it's easy because it's really similar to the Cayley tree. What we are doing, we start with the initial uh, configuration and we consider all these leaves of the, of the distance which are connected to each other, but we don't uh, do not consider this uh, because like we consider only the typical uh, distance and not consider the larger distances, which are like, you see that uh, something is happening here, but it's cut off. So it means that up to this distance, we can, we can just use the uh, transfer matrix, or if you want firm, uh, for scattering approximation, it's just equivalent for this kind of uh, graphs. And we can calculate the matrix element of this long, uh, humming distance of the order of the diameter of the graph. If we do this, it will be related to the product of nearly independent random numbers given by the hopping. Each link is just has its, its own hopping, uh, which is just the same amplitude, and the difference of the uh, on site energies, disordered on site energies of the uh, corresponding sites. So as soon as we have the matrix element, which is just the product of R elements of this form, its logarithm is the sum of these uh, random elements, which are nearly independent from each other. And as soon as it's uh, just R is large, is increasing with increasing system size, we should have the determined dynamic limit, just Gaussian distribution of the logarithms, or if you want log normal distribution of the matrix elements themselves, which is one property, which we should remember, fat tail distribution. Log normal distribution is a fat tail distribution. Another property, which we should claim, is there, what is the typical matrix element? Meaning the most probable matrix elements are, uh, element among these ones which we consider. And the most probable will be related to the typical most probable hopping term to the power r. r is just the, the distance, humming distance between our sides which we consider. If we take into account uh, the branching number of our graph or just this, that the number of configurations scales exponentially with their system size with their diameter if you want of the graph, we will immediately see that our typical matrix element should uh, go down as a power, as a negative power of the Hilbert space dimension. So it means that we should consider if we would like to have this kind of the mapping, there are random matrix ensembles with the low, some fat tail distribution, log normal, for example, and the typical matrix elements given by their negative uh, power of the Hilbert space dimension. So let's do it. What we have on the diagonal for this matrix, on the diagonal, we have just the initial diagonal of our initial matrix. On each configuration, we have random number for, for this random regular graph, they are independent random numbers with a certain amplitude. And each off diagonal element, we replace our dense matrix by, by the complete graph with the same distribution, because just we consider this uh, mapping uh, in terms of the random matrices in this easiest way. And it will be a log, term, a log normal distribution with this typical scaling down as the size of the matrix or size of the Hilbert space. So we have two parameters here. One parameter is related to the size of the typical matrix element. So if you increase gamma, so it means that you typically decrease off diagonal matrix element, it's equivalently uh, you increase disorder. So gamma is the disorder, if you want, param parameterized in such a way. And we have also another element, which is the width of our distribution. So if we consider increasing this P, you see that it's like tails becomes more fat. And therefore we have a more fat tail distribution. Therefore, let's consider this parameter T. Question? Uh, yeah, I, I had another question. I'm still a bit confused because um, I would have thought that, I mean, what I thought, what I understood you were doing was you're computing the matrix elements between or the hopping matrix elements between your initial site and the bunch of sites on the leaf of your tree, on the leaves of your tree, or, or on the. Uh, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but you don't actually compute, or, or what you're saying is that, um, but you don't actually compute the matrix element between two sites which are on the leaf of the tree. Correct. Yes, I just replaced them by. Uh, uh... This typical or this this uh, distribution distribute identical distribute. But so then, what I do, what I do, I compute these green ones, and then say, okay, all others I will replace by the same the sampling from the same distribution, identically uh, independently distributed random numbers. 
Um, and then, of course, I, le- I get rid of any distance. I cannot uh, speak about distance anymore because I fixed on the typical distance and I say that ev- everything, the rest is not important as soon as I just put there the same distribution, something from the same distribution. But is this a faithful thing or is this a faithful representation of your original problem? And the reason I'm asking this is because if I consider all the sites on the boundary of your tree, then and look at the sort of distribution of the mutual distances between them, uh, that of course also has a distribution. It, right? Yes, therefore I'm not considering the tree, I'm considering the random regular graph. Where but Even each... on a random regular graph, uh, I mean, you had a tree for the derivation, right? But then the derivation that you showed for the matrix element doesn't go through for the random regular graph because you considered only one path. So uh, can you uh, repeat your question then? Because so, okay, so my original question was that, are you if trying to write down an effective Hamiltonian for the sites only on the halo, what do you call the halo? First, yes. And then I just uh, say that, okay, let's consider all sites. So what I can do, I can consider one initial point, it will be uh, these halo sites. If I consider another uh, point, then typically, the typical, uh, the typical I will have different halo sites, but with the same distribution. Do you agree with this? Uh, yes, I mean, I, I can, I mean, so if you if you want to write down a matrix, if you write down want to write down an effective Hamiltonian matrix just for the halo sites, with, uh, I mean, then I still don't understand why just can you for just- the, Just for the halo sites, uh, it will not be complete rough. Because uh, if I consider even the halo sites only from the one initial point and consider the mutual distance between these halo sites, mm-hmm. it will not be the typical distance. It can be- Yeah, the which, is, which is why my, I was asking the question that why yes. can you make this replacement? So I'm, I'm, I'm doing the following. I'm like for each line, I'm uh, calculating these green ones and then just uh, using the, the uh, approximation that it's dense matrix, I just say that uh, these are the most important ones. Why? I can uh, tell you why, because like localization, delocalization transition, it, it, uh, it appears at distances, like uh, as soon as you increase the system size, you see that number of the uh, elements of the Hamming distance R is increasing exponentially, while the perturbation mm-hmm. theory will show you exponential decay of the uh, uh, amplitude of the hopping. Mm-hmm. And as soon as you, you are in the perturbative limit, the exponent of the decay of the matrix element will be faster than the increase of the uh, number of sites of the Hamming distance. In the localized size, it's fine. And the first uh, divergence will appear at the distance of the diameter. So the most typical ones, will give you the main contribution to delocalization. Therefore, this is the motivation why I'm considering mostly them and get rid of others. So of course, it's the approximation in the sense that I get rid of all this information about their short distances. And it means that in terms of uh, dynamics, I get rid of the information at uh, really small times. What I'm interested in, in their like long times dynamics with increasing system size, and uh, I would like to uh, show that it will be an amount of slow dynamics. Like some okay, uh, I'll just ask one, one more question and then maybe we can discuss after the talk. So can you go to your next slide where you actually wrote down that Hamiltonian? Um, yeah, this one. So in, in this uh, matrix that you have on the slide, should I think of each site as one of the halo sites? No, so just the, the initial site. I just replaced this matrix, which is plotted here, by the uh, complete graph. So what I can have, I also ask I can... a question then too, because yes, I think yes. I, I can see what, what the daddy is, is trying to yes, ask. Yes. And I, I have mm-hmm. the same question. So if you go to the next two, two pages ahead, you have, for example, H. Yeah, here. Sorry, sorry to yeah. push you back and forth, but so you have, for example, H I J right on the in this yes. matrix. Yes. What are I and J? I guess that that would be my question. Just the initial site, initial configurations. I and J. These are two. What do you mean initial? Oh, I see. So you're saying. No, I don't see. Can you explain when, again? What are I and J? So let me what? go, for, for example, suppose I pick- H I see M and L, what, what I am speaking about, which R and J? So look at the, if I'm looking at your matrix, and if I go and pick, for example, the okay, matrix M element. Uh, it's just initial configurations. And so they are not, all the, not all of them are, so it's, it's the approximation uh, made here. So let me, let me uh, do it once again. So what uh, I'm doing, I do not change the size of the matrix. 
right? So I do not change the diagonal. I consider the most important config, most important hoppings, which are the typical distance, which are marked by green here. They form really the dense matrix, not the complete graph, dense matrix, right? I calculate the distribution of these green ones. And then, so this is not approximation. This is, this is correct. Then I do the approximation. Okay, so it's dense matrix. Uh, then let's consider that the entire matrix is just given by this uh, distribution. This is the approximation because all other hoppings are not given by this. But the number of them is, is uh, smaller. Like at fixed, any fixed distance, uh, the number of these matrix elements of smaller distance or larger distance will be smaller. So essentially, if I understand correctly, tell, tell me if this is correct. You are saying here that I pick an initial site, then I, fog, I sort of allow, I mean, I only put in my new Hamiltonian all the, all the sites at the, at the you know, maximum, uh, rather typical distance. And I put in the matrix elements in the, in the matrix to those sites and nothing else, correct? No, I, I so put all of them. I pick an just... in, yeah, but. So, okay, so, it's the question of, of, of uh, forming the, the matrix, right? What I'm doing is that uh, I'm calculating the matrix elements of this form. What will be the matrix, what, what will be other matrix elements? They are not at, at this uh, maximal distance, maximal probable distance. They will be a different distance. Like for example, the adjacent sites will be also present here in this matrix, right? But they do not uh, give me the, the contribution to the uh, problem at least to the dynamics and the, to the delocalization problem. And what I do, I just replace them for simplicity. It's approximation uh, by the random matrix ensemble with the same distribution as the typical ones. It's like I consider one initial configuration and all the sites which are the typical distance and say, okay, it looks like the same as if I consider all of them with the same distribution, uh, matrix elements of these at the, at the typical distance because I have the finite fra fraction of them. So whether it's uh, accurate or not, it's the question of uh, prefactors, I would say. I'm interested in scaling. In the scaling with the system size, fractality, multifractality, or uh, diffusion, subdiffusion, will be also related to the scaling with the system size, with the matrix size in this example. So I'm not saying about the, this is correct. Have I answered? Yeah, okay. I, at least, at least, I at least I operationally understand um, what you are doing. Although I'm not completely sure how. Why is it justified? Because there is a there is a finite weight in the distribution outside this red box. So sure. why course. are you allowed to? Why are you allowed to approximate everything uh, with that? Is still it's not something that's clear to me. It's not like this distribution is shrinking to a delta function inside that red it's box. Not. It's not uh, shrinking to a delta function. So, so, so the justification behind this is something we can discuss after the talk, but at least operationally, I understand what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not mathematically rigorous. This is correct. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry for holding you up for so long. It's fine. It's like, uh, I hope that it, it became uh, clear uh, for others as well. So, but what, what, we, what we have uh, so far with this, we have two parameters. Like after this mapping, after this approximation, what I have, I have this, uh, really a random matrix ensemble with fat tail distribution, for example, this log normal and two parameters. One uh, shows me the, the like parameters disorder. As soon as gamma is larger, the typical matrix limits are small and disorder is larger effectively. And another one parameters me the, the tail of the uh, fat tail of the distribution. As soon as P is increasing, I increase the fat, fatness of the tail. So then uh, we can consider two things first. As soon as the typical matrix element scales with their uh, matrix size or Hilbert space dimension down, uh, we can calculate the moments of the of the diagonal matrix elements, and they will be given by both this parameter disorder and this uh, fatness of the tail with the amplitude with the uh, order Q, of course. And here you see that uh, different orders, different moments, will give you different scaling with the system size. So it's it's not uh, uh, different only if we consider P going to zero. And, but this is uh, clear that it will not be fat tail anymore. As soon as you send P to zero, all these gamma Qs, all these scalings will be the same as gamma, as the typical matrix element. And all the moments of the all diagonal elements will scale in the same way. So it means that I can consider a box distribution, a Gaussian, whatever you want. Because I'm speaking about uh, scaling, but not the prefactors, it doesn't matter for me. It will, be, it's, it will uh, have the name of the usual Rosenzweig portion ensemble, which I will consider in the next couple of slides. 
Another limiting case of really fat tail distribution, if I send P to infinity, I will see immediately that all these guys with any finite positive Q will give me neg negative uh, gamma Q means positive power of N. In the thermodynamic limit, these guys will diverge, and therefore it's similar to Levy flights or Levy matrix if you want. But uh, what we showed in our uh, preprints in our works, that uh, the one corresponding to the random regular graph is there in terms of symmetries, in terms of uh, really tree structure, local tree structure, should be given by P equal to one. So with this in mind, let me uh, just jump first to the P equal to zero case and static phase diagram of this model. In order to understand this, let's uh, just consider the simplest possible approximation which we have so far. It's just a uh, Fermi Golden Rule. If we consider initial configuration with a certain on-site energy epsilon r and just calculate uh, its broadening with respect to all hopping to other sites, it should be related to the dense global density of states and the sum over all possible matrix elements from this r to r prime squared. As soon as we consider p equal to zero, not fat tail distribution, all the moments scale in the same way. So this second moment, uh, so what we have is just all these matrix elements are given by the independent identity distributed random numbers with the finite uh, variance, and therefore we can use just the subtle point, oh sorry, the central limit theorem, and it will be self average We have n elements there, n is here, and each of them is just scales like h, h square as n to minus gamma. So what we have, we have that the power broadening also scales with the matrix size as the power one minus gamma. If I compare this power with the bandwidth of order of one, as soon as gamma is larger than one, we should have this broadening much smaller, parametrically smaller than the bandwidth. And as soon as I consider gamma smaller than two, so it means this gamma is much larger than one over n, much larger than mean level spacing, I should have some kind of the fractal dimension, which is finite, because I should have this broadening of order of like including many extensive number of levels, but really shrinking with the system size much smaller, parametrically smaller than the bandwidth. If I calculate the wave function in this approximation, bright wigner approximation, uh, averaged over of diagonal elements, I will see that it will form just Lorentzian, both in terms of energies, eigen energies, and coordinates. So in coordinates, it's a little bit more tricky because it's like random numbers here. But still, in terms of coordinates, let me fix, consider some coordinate and uh, uh, consider distribution, consider uh, some fixed energy and distribution of R. And you see what I will have. I will have really some kind of the fractal, not of course geometrically, but in terms of the number of available sites here, close in energy in epsilon r to energy with a bandwidth of order of mini bandwidth of order of gamma. I will have extended number of them, but zero fraction. And in terms of uh, fixing the coordinate and considering the distribution of over energy, I will uh, just plot the local density of states, which is weighted delta peak distribution over energy at the fixed R. I fix it on some blue uh, fractal. Then what I, what I will see in terms of energies, I will see immediately that my energies form a kind of the mini band close to the epsilon R with the width of order of gamma. So it means that what are these sites in space or in Hilbert space forming me the fractal? They are the closest in uh, amplitude epsilon r. And what are the energy levels, which are closest in, uh, to each other with respect to some epsilon r fixed coordinate here uh, with the width gamma? So what we have so far for the simplest model, we have uh, just fractality, which means that we have the entire uh, full complete basis forming mini band which is forming their complete basis on the, in the space or in the Hilbert space on the certain fractal. So then within this uh, fractal, we should have just GOE statistics because it's compact object with uh, adjusted levels and hybridized everywhere with respect to <coughs> Fermi Golden Rule. While uh, the uh, fractal dimension will be just the same for all orders of chi squared and given by just this fractal dimension, which is the 
width of the uh, mini band divided by the mean level spacing. Okay, so so far so good. What we have is just as soon as we have not far tail distribution, we have this Fermi golden rule approximation, and we have everything just given by the fractality. If we go to another fractal, different coordinate, we will form another mini band. And within each mini band, we have the level repulsion. What within mini bands, we have for some statistics. But you see, it's, it's very artificial. It's not the case for the many body localized phase. It's not the Gaussian statistics or Wigner Tyson statistics for small energy uh, differences. And also, it's not the, the compact object in the energy. What we have for any general P, we have the fat tail distribution. Therefore, we should go beyond the self averaging. Going beyond the self averaging, let's consider first on the safe uh, and waving arguments. Uh, we have this fat tail distribution of H in the sum. And therefore, our gammas are not self averaging anymore. I cannot use central limit theorem. And it means for different energies, I have different broadenings, gamma, or different hybridization of levels. And instead of this compact object of minibands, I should have something like this, which has really uh, gaps which can be small or large or whatever for one fractal. If I go to the another fractal, to other miniband, then immediately I will see that these minibands start to penetrate to each other. As soon as they start to penetrate to each other, I see that the spectral structure, local spectral structure, becomes fractal or multifractal, not ergodic as it was. But as soon as we're speaking about the spectrum, we're speaking about dynamics. It was, should be diffusive here, and here it will be something which is not diffusive. Question? No? Okay, so I want to mute it himself. Uh, sorry, so I'll, I'll, I'll take the opportunity and yeah, ask one please. small question. So can you actually go back to the, uh, go back one slide? So this gamma that you are calculating, it's yeah. somewhat like the Green's function, right? Because or they might because um, gamma is not the Green's function. Gamma is uh, self energy. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I mean well, this is this is kind of the Green's function. Green's function and gamma is the self energy. Now yes. even for a standard Anderson localized phase in say one D, it's known that gamma has a Levy distribution and for a finite system it's cut off by an inverse Gaussian. So even then gamma is has has fat tails even in the most sort of conventional localized phases we know. So yeah, it's great, but it's like uh, this. So why are you allowed to sort of take the mean and call it? The golden rule doesn't work for uh, usual uh, Anderson model, right? So can you say that again? Fermi golden rule in this sense will not work for Anderson model for short range model because uh, you have like uh, the the localization structure is not related to the collective effect; it's related to the uh, real resonance there. So what I, I did, so I, I could start with uh, just the initial model of frozen spike port of uh, random regular graph and say, okay, let's calculate this gamma with all these matrix elements. And mm -hmm. I will fail because I do not have the dense matrix there. I will have only the sparse matrix of uh, short range hopping uh, and it will not show this, this kind of the picture. So, so therefore what, what I'm doing is first I map my model to their dense matrix of independently, okay, nearly independently random numbers. Uh, of the diagonal matrix limit and then use the, the uh, Fermi golden rule. Or Wigner White Scope, which uh, I will use in this um, next slides. But maybe can we discuss after? Uh, sure, sure, yeah, okay. Deadline? Because like, we have like nine minutes and some people will, will be gone and we can continue discussion, but uh, these people cannot, right? Sure, sure, yeah, okay. okay. Sorry. Because I, I haven't, haven't <laughs> to, to the dynamics. So statically, what we have so far is like uh, Fermi golden rules from one side, or I can edit uh, with the resonance counting. Resonance counting means the number of resonances, number of sites in resonance with this certain site R. And if it's increasing with this system size, then we have delocalization. If it's not increasing with this system size, but just finite, we should have localization. And this Fermi golden rule is just the same as here. Just I uh, get rid of the density of states, which is either related to gamma or related to uh, beer uh, density of states is just this. Uh, if this sum is divergent, I have ergodicity. Like it means that this gamma is uh, of the size of the band itself, not the mini band. If it's uh, not, if it's uh, going down with the system size, then of course I have mini bands and non ergodic So with these two principles, which are like I do not explain them, I do not have time for this. Uh, I can 
First, consider this Rosenzweig quarter phase diagram, P equal to zero, just this vertical line. And I indeed see uh, between gamma one and two, this fractality, which I explained you in the uh, two slides back. I have localization, I have ergodicity, everything is okay, but just fractality, ergodic fractality, if you want. If I go to the uh, P larger, so and use the same kind of the uh, localization principle and Fermi Golden Rule like principle, uh, then I see that immediately I have the really robust multifractal phase. Not just fractal, but multifractal, it can be considered analytically or numerically. Uh, but uh, this is robust multifractality, which I motivated uh, with this enhancement of superconductivity, with these applications to whatever uh, machine learning and uh, quantum algorithms. But what you see uh, in addition is that this multifractal phase disappears as soon as I go to the symmetric point of a regular, random regular graph, P equal to one. This appears at three critical point. It means that uh, these two phases, these two uh, phase transitions, they uh, really in the thermodynamic limit go to one point. All the stuff which uh, we uh, saw numerically so far as like we should have the multifractality at a certain range of parameters, it will be just hidden in the finite size direction. So it means that it looks like for a random regular graph at least, we have with this mapping, we have just three critical points. And uh, so statically, we don't see in the term dynamically, we, we shouldn't see the, the uh, multifractal phase anymore. What about the dynamics? I just remind you two things which I uh, told you already that numerically on this kind of the hierarchical graphs, what is seen is that uh, the dynamics is either stretch exponential or at smaller times or smaller system sizes looks like power law. Uh, while we're speaking about mapping of this model to the, mapping, to the model with fat tail distribution and the typical matrix element scaling down as their size of the matrix. And then uh, in order to consider dynamics, it's not enough to consider just Fermi golden rule. Why? The answer is, is uh, very simple because uh, as soon as we don't have a continuous spectrum to go to, we cannot use just the broadening. We should go one step back. And uh, I remind you that uh, this Fermi golden rule is just uh, given by the calculation of the return probability, like one wave function amplitude it prepares in the side R in the vault in time. And it's related to uh, the replace, replacement of the sinus squared of a certain uh, argument divided by this argument both squared by the delta P at their very long times. At very long times, you have really delta peak distributed, uh, delta peak function here instead of sinus squared over argument squared. And therefore you have this uh, broadening. However, as soon as you consider finite times, not the infinite times with respect to the mean level spacing, which is just the adjacent uh, levels here, you should take into account this finite broadening of this delta peak. And therefore, so instead of this, uh, we will just consider the, for example, box distribution. It can be whatever distribution, whatever function replacement, but box is the simplest one of the width re uh, related to the inverse time, time and uh, mean level space. So it means that we should replace our gamma now it's with the prefactor T and with the summation not over all matrix elements, but all the matrix elements of the number of them decreases with time, inversely proportional to time. As soon as these matrix elements are not fat tail distributed, what we have so far, of course, this self averageness again comes into play. And what we have, this sum is proportional to NT. These two factors, T in the denominator, T in the numerator, they cancel out, and we have just the usual Fermi Golden rule. However, if the distribution is fat tail distribution, here, the distribution of this matrix element is fat tail, what we have is that this sum can be dominated by maximal element in the sum, not the collective effect of self average of central limit theorem. As soon as we have this, so it's like I will uh, tell you in which parameters it is correct. As soon as we have this, we should uh, really take into account the finite number of samples which we sample with which we sample this distribution of identically dependently distributed random numbers. This NT going down is still much larger than one, but going down with increasing time. And the matrix element, which is maximal in this among these NT elements, will of course decrease. 
as soon as it will decrease. So it means that this sum will not be uh, given by just by the empty number of elements here, but it will be smaller. And eventually gamma will decay with time. As soon as gamma decays with time, the logarithm of the return probability will not be exponentially. The, the logarithm will be linear decaying with time, but it will be something slower. Okay, for a moment, if you buy this argument, I would like to show you that it's not just slow dynamics, but it's slow uh, dynamics of uh, the form of a stretch exponential. So corresponding to sub diffusion. How I can show you? For this, I again should use these arguments of the scaling. So just scaling which I have, I have the scaling of the typical matrix elements with their uh, system size or matrix size or uh, Hilbert space dimension to some power. And if I write down the log normal distribution in the parameters of uh, like scaling my matrix element as itself, like some power of n is just parameterization, I can write down the probability distribution also as the power of n, where this power is just given by the function of all these parameters gamma, g, and parameter p, which is just parabola for log normal. I just write if you want to. Uh, the compact form of this log normal distribution in terms of the logarithm of uh, typical and logarithm of the matrix element itself. But what you see is that in the thermodynamic limit, it's uh, from one side, it's, it's really peaked and fat tail distribution. And I can calculate with straightforward analytics, I can calculate the return probability given by this formula with nt as a power. And then uh, after uh, some straightforward analytics, which uh, I cannot uh, <laughs> represent here because of lack of time, it will be the logarithm of the return product is given by the power of n, with the power given by the same distribution. So it's just for generic distribution, not only for this uh, log normal one, where the uh, uh, argument is replaced by the logarithm of time. Tau is just parameterization of time, Delta is just capital delta is just a parameterization of mean level space. And what I will be focusing here, I will be focusing on this function in the power f to tau minus tau plus delta. Of course, for this uh, simple case of uh, log normal distribution, it's just parabola, shifted but doesn't matter, just parabola, where it's somewhere it's negative, somewhere it's positive. Let's consider these separate steps, uh, separate uh, regimes, Dif different regimes separately, sorry. Uh, first, if this power is negative, the logarithm of the return probability is negative power of n and the term dynamic limit it goes to zero very fast. So it means that the return probability should be very close to u plus some corrections which are polynomial in the Hilbert damage. On the other side, if I consider the positive uh, value of this power, then I see that the logarithm of return probability <coughs> is the positive power of n, but it's, it's impossible because the return probability should be saturated at the inverse participation ratio. So it means that uh, it's in return probability at most scaling down as n to some power minus whatever d2. This at <coughs> maximum can be logarithm of n, not the n to some power. So therefore, <clears throat> this wigner weizkopf approximation should break down because of the saturation and uh, in terms of dynamic limit doesn't take into account this saturation. Everywhere here it should be saturated. Everywhere here is just perturbative region. And what we end up with is just the small vicinity of zero of this power, where we can, of course, expand our function f as a linear function with a certain slope. And it will immediately give us, as the certain slope is here, it will immediately give us the logarithm of the return probability as the power, some power of t, which is just given by their uh, derivative of this function minus one. This is minus one, this is derivative here. Or return probability will be stretched exponential. So far, so good, but we are living just in the vicinity of some point in time. What is this? So, and uh, in this uh, point, we should really take into account the fact that the time itself is the power of this. It's like n to the power tau. And if we plot it in really in the real time, this vicinity of the zero will be extensive region. Before that, everywhere, just the return probability is of order of unity with some small corrections, perturbative region. 
is this extensive in logarithm of n regime of times, we have really stretch exponential behavior and then saturation. This is the emergent stretch exponential behavior for all kinds of models with any distribution of f, not only log normal distribution. So this, this can be also, uh, sorry, I run out of time. It can be shown numerically that this is the case both for a run, uh, random regular graph itself or log normal distribution distributed Rosenzweig quarter itself. You see that these plots are very close to each other. And if you take the double logarithm derivative over time, which is just this kappa, which will be just really something as a plateau here, which uh, is also even for RFG, you can compare it with some <coughs> theoretical approximation, which is very close for uh, quite uh, small system sizes and not very large disorder. And also what you see is like, as soon as you increase the system size from blue to red, the range of this stretch exponential behavior increases. So it means that what we have, we have the stretch exponential, emergent stretch exponential behavior, which will be exact only in the term dynamically. At any finite size, it will be given by the finite interval, but this interval with increasing the system size. Uh, what we have so far with this is that we have this kappa parameter, which is the power of the stretch exponential, and this can go between zero and one. And of course, we should have then two additional transition, transitions. As soon as kappa is going to one, and it corresponds to the uh, criterion where we should go from stretch exponential to exponential behavior, you see it from here. Of course, we should uh, return back to the Fermi golden rule. And this Fermi golden rule is uh, has very uh, natural uh, criterion you know, to, to be recovered. The typical matrix elements of our uh, full matrix should be of order or larger than the middle of it. Which means that if I consider just a single resonance or even not resonance, but consider two adjacent levels on the diagonal and consider the corresponding matrix element, is, 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 which is of order of typical or larger, then of course, all these matrix elements will be all these uh, sites or configurations will be hybridized by the typical matrix element as soon as the typical matrix element larger than the middle of the state. And as soon as we have this, we should have the uh, density of states, which is continuous, and we should have the return of the Fermi gold. As soon as typical matrix element is much smaller, parametrically smaller than the mean level spacing, we should break down this dense matrix structure. And what will end up is just the uh, sparse matrix uh, of uh, very large maxima, which returns us back to, to the structure of like still most probable distances, but they are not given by the uh, peak, the most probable element of this distance strip, but it's fat tail. And this fat tail will give you a stretch exponential. So it means that we, we should have one parameter, one uh, transition between kappa smaller or equal than one from fairly golden rule to the stretch exponential. Well, we should have also another transition from kappa larger than zero and kappa equal to zero. And this is very similar to the Anderson transition to the, if you want, uh, uh, resonance counting. The only difference is that here, this uh, average matrix element is uh, cutted off uh, by the diagonal disorder, while here it no not. Therefore, if I put both lines, these lines here on the phase diagram, and start with this uh, stretch exponential behavior to some frozen dynamics, which is not even stretch exponential, but something slower like power law, whatever. I see that the, in the entire multifractal phase, this guy, this uh, phase transition between the stretch exponential frozen dynamics is just coincides with the Anderson transition. While as soon as you increase the fatness of the tail, it start to penetrate to the formally or statically ergodic phase. So we can have the phase which is ergodic statically with the fractal dimension one, but with the dynamics, which is like glossy dynamics. Another thing is that this transition between the uh, kind of diffusive and subdiffusive dynamics crosses both multifractal and ergodic phases. And what you see is that in the entire phase diagram, it can be kind of the multifractality, which is with just exponential decay of the return probability, like diffusion on the random regular, on the uh, resonance wave quarter and real genuine multifractality with some subdiffusion. However, also in the ergodic phase, you have ergodic phase with this exponential decay of the return probability and the ergodic phase with subdiffusion. And uh, interestingly, on random regular graph, 
only this realizes because the minimal zero disorder corresponds to the gamma equal to one. With this, this is my last slide. Sorry for this delay. Uh, I can uh, try to convince you that we have kind of the mapping not rigorously mathematically yet, but some mapping between short range systems and random uh, matrix ensembles, which is uh, mostly based on the hierarchical structure of the Hilbert space uh, or exponential growing number of configurations available with the growing Hamid distance. We show that the, we can go, we should go beyond self averaging because we have factorial distribution of these matrix elements. And therefore, instead of the compact <clears throat> mini band in the energy structure, like in the Rosenzweig quarter, we should have some object which is like uh, spread in space or in energy space. And therefore, these two mini bands should penetrate to each other and show some slow dynamics in terms of the time basis. And it has the applications, of course, to this quantum annealing and so on. And uh, dynamics can be either uh, diffusive or sub diffusive, both in multi fractal and ergon phases. With it, thank you for your attention. I will be glad to discuss and answer your questions. All right. Thanks, Ivan. Um, so, 